cold day here in Kentucky so it's perfect timing to do a little DIY um, this video I'm going to show you how to take our horse size grazing muzzle and expand it to make it fit a little better on a horse that's maybe like a warm blood or a draft draft cross um, it takes a little bit of skill and you need a few supplies um, you're gonna need some way to cut. Uh, this is just a Leatherman knife. You might also have some like nippers that would work for this. You're gonna need some type of webbing. This is biothane. It could be any type of nylon webbing. You want it to be pretty durable. Um, and you probably only need maybe a foot of it, depending on how um, involved you're gonna get. You'll probably need a hole punch or a drill of some kind. And then you're either gonna need Chicago screws. Um, you could use zip ties for this project and I'll show you that option as well. Um, or I actually have a pop riveter. Um, that's an option too. I'm gonna be using that because my Chicago screws actually aren't the correct um, thickness. Um, you want your Chicago screws to be about, um, let's see, I think the muzzle is about an eight inch thick, so a little over an eight inch, eighth of an inch, um, because you want them to tighten down into your nylon strap. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, and this is going to be my chin side of my muzzle, um, and you could do both the front and the back. For this, I'm just going to do the back, and what I'm basically going to be doing is um, cutting out these corners and then um, using heat to bend this and kind of open it up a little bit more. Um, and then we're going to use the fasteners and the webbing to kind of like rebuild this corner here so that it still remains secure. So I'm going to use this knife to cut the corner. Um, and I actually have scissors that will work for this as well. This is this knife's not super sharp. You do not have to have scissors like these. Um, I have absolutely done this with a knife, a sharper knife before. Um, and basically what I'm trying to do is get a nice edge there so it's not pointy or pokey. Um, and you can always smooth, if there's any like rough edges, you can always smooth that down with like a little sandpaper if you have like even a nail file. Um, and then sometimes actually taking a little bit of heat to it, like a, a flame of some kind, can kind of like round those edges as well. So that's what we're hoping for right here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Make sure I got the right side. I'm just gonna trim those corners out. And this muzzle actually was already broken in the corners, so it's a nice, uh, nice use for this muzzle. Give it a new, a new life, even though it was a little broken before. All right, just kind of rounding off those edges a little bit, and they're not perfect, but I'll, I'll try to round them out. Okay, so now that I have those cut out we've got to bend this. So I'm gonna um, get some water boiling because that's the easiest way I found. Um, and then I will be right back. All right, please ignore my dirty stove. But now that I've got this water, um, it's not quite boiling, um, but it's I've got some steam rolling, so it's good and hot. And basically I just need to get this bottom corner um, down in the hot water and I'm gonna hold it down in there for um, around 30 seconds give or take. Um, and basically you just want this bottom joint in there. Again, be careful if you're using really hot water, you don't want to get burnt. Um, and I actually don't need this part down in the water. And while I'm doing this, um, I am going to try to figure out how I'm going to hold this open um, while it cools off. So um, I've done a couple different things where I've just like laid it flat on something and like put weight on it. Um, I've also like zip tied a piece of wood here to like squish. Basically what I'm trying to do is just open this up um, and I can go ahead and start pressing on that to kind of push it down. Um, but basically I'm just opening up this end. 
And if you are using our inserts, it will kind of widen this slot down here. So it might keep your insert from fitting quite as snug, but I think it should still work um, even if you do this. But I think that's been 30 seconds or more. And you can always do it again if you don't get enough bend. And so basically, um, I am just pushing this out to really widen that. And I want this to stay pushed out um, probably a little further than I actually want it because when we do the next part, we can pull it back in if we need to. Um, but I want it to stay that way until it cools off. You can see it's already starting to hold, um, which is great. Um, in the past, I've done this for like 30 minutes. Uh, that might be a little overkill, but um, if you only want to have to do this once, you know, um, try to figure out a way to get this set. Um, I'm actually going to find something to set it on, like maybe the, <laughs> the end of my like couch arm here and then put a weight on it to get it forced out just like that. So um, hopefully you can figure out a way to, to do that. Um, another option might be to set this like on your countertop and have a weight here um, with the rest of it hanging off to really force that angle out. So um, yeah, go ahead and do that and let it make sure um, it is completely cool to the touch before you remove it from its little brace. And I will meet you back in a couple minutes. All right, so I was able to actually just find a little clamp and clamp this to the end of my table and it kind of forced it open um, to the amount that I wanted. And it is, has cooled off, so I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp it. And as you can see, that gives us a pretty aggressive opening, but again, I can, it'll probably bounce back a little bit um, and you can always like pull it further closed if you need to. Um, and also, if you need more than this, you could do the very same thing in the front um, if you clip these corners and you could actually also expand it this way if you needed to. Um, so that's definitely an option. I find for the most part, just opening this chin area up is usually um, gives them plenty of space. So our next step is now we've got to figure out how to, um, we've got to close off these corners. Um, and so what I like to do is use, um, this is biothane. And um, again, you can use any type of like webbing. I like to do like a nylon webbing if I don't have the, the biothane. Um, but, and basically I'm just gonna be closing it off here and then I'll be adding um, one of our corner straps here. You could also close it off higher up um, and that does kind of leave an opening here. Um, but I'm gonna kind of, because I'm, you're gonna have to punch some holes. So you wanna find an area that has like a decent amount of, of real estate to punch those holes. Um, so I like to use kind of the upper part of this larger area here um, and then kind of come across. You could also go kind of diagonal. Um, you could kind of choose your own adventure there and go from up there to down there, um, which actually, I think I might try that um, and just do the diagonal. Um, because how it fits usually um, they don't they aren't gonna get their mouth around down here as easily but I am also gonna add corner straps either way and I recommend doing that if you do open it up just because there's a lot more space um, you're gonna want to have more than just the four anchors of the regular straps so adding corner straps um, from the biothane or your whatever um, you could also do leather for this honestly um, from here up back up to the halter be really helpful. Um, so yeah, I think I'm actually gonna go from here to here and then it kind of splits the difference. What you're gonna do next, um, if you're doing a Chicago screw, you're gonna have to punch a hole that's about a, a quarter of an inch, um, which is usually the biggest hole on a like standard leather punch. Believe it or not, you can punch through this with a leather punch. So I'm gonna choose a spot right in the middle of that space and go ahead and make my hole. Um, you could also use a drill. Again, you want this to be about a quarter inch if you're doing the Chicago screws um, or whatever your Chicago screw um, width is there because some of them might be a little different. And then I'm gonna come over here and do this upper part here. Um, and then for the other side, I'm actually, um, I'm gonna be using a, 
a pop rivet. Um, the, the other option is, and maybe I'll do that on one of these, I'll show you how to do a zip tie as well. So this is gonna be the Chicago screw side here. Um, I'm gonna do a pop rivet. For my pop rivets, I need a smaller hole. Um, and so I'm gonna do just one here. And then on this side where I'm gonna use my zip tie, um, I don't love the zip ties because they can be a potential uh, rub um, point. So, and you will need to do two holes if you're gonna use a zip tie. And these holes might not be quite large enough. We'll just kind of depends. I've got a bunch of different, got some pretty little zip ties. So this might work. We'll, we'll just have to see and I'll kind of modify from there. Okay. So now that I have my holes, I'm gonna take my strip and you're gonna to wanna to attach the strip on the outside of the muzzle so it doesn't cause a rub point. And I'm just gonna kind of place it more or less where I want it and then go back to my large hole. Biothane is a little challenging to go through with a hole punch. This is a newer punch, so I'm hoping that it won't give me too much trouble. Um, and that's at least gonna show me where I need to make that hole on the biothane. Um, yeah, so I've got a mark there so I can do it a little better. You can drill through biothane as well. Um, honestly, it's just kind of a tough material, but that's why I like it for this project um, because I don't want this part to be breakaway. If you did want it to be breakaway, like I said, you could make it out of leather. Um, and then using the zip tie, as your fastener would also give it a breakaway point that was a little bit um, less intense than any of the metal fasteners that I'm going to be using here. All right, so I kind of have my hole there. Um, I'm going to clean it up with my knife here because, like I said, this, this biothane is it's pretty tough. It's, it can be a little challenging to work with, but it's really handy. Um, I like that it doesn't hold moisture, which is really nice. Um, and if you have any like fuzzy ends, you can kind of sear those with a, a lighter. Um, don't want to pop out of there. I will deal with that later. All right, so once you have your hole here, um, you'll just line up those holes and I'm not sure if these are the right length or not. Maybe a little short. Um, you can get these in all different lengths, but basically you want the length, uh, I think actually that's gonna be perfect. Um, and these are 10 fifteenths. <laughs> is what it looks like, uh, five by five, or six millimeter, six millimeter um, Chicago screws. Uh, so if this size works, then that's probably the size to get. Um, you wanna take your side that's flat and use that on the inside. And so you're just gonna take that on the inside and pop it through the hole just like that because that'll create a nice soft surface that shouldn't cause them any rubs because it kind of tapers down really nicely. Um, and then you will take the hole in your biothane and kind of press it over that. Um, it kind of doesn't want to go all the way over it. And then this side is the side with your screw. Um, and the nice thing about Chicago screws is they, they act like rivets, but they're really easy to install. You don't really need any fancy tools. I always just use my thumb to kind of get them tight. And then, depending, most of them have like a flathead screwdriver. Um, and, and I think, put a flathead on this guy. There we go. Let's see if this flathead fits. And then I basically just hold it, hold the back with my finger and then tighten it down. Um, if they're too long, they will tighten down but not have a lot of hold. Okay, that is too fat. 
This Chicago screw actually has a tiny little Phillips head in the middle. So I'm gonna see if my Phillips head will fit in there. Um, if you're, if the like shaft of the Chicago screw is too long, um, you won't be able to tighten it down all the way. And how these work and keep from coming undone is they kind of like squeeze the materials together and it almost locks them in place. So if they're, if this is too long this way um, and you can't tighten it down to where it squishes into the material a little bit, it will likely not stay uh, snug. Um, but you can always just like test them and see if they're like wiggling around and come back and tighten them back up. That's a really easy option. Okay, so there's that side. And then I'm gonna just basically do the same thing here. And actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the next side because you've already seen that. Um, and I will show you those other two options. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. Um, and something that you can do also, if you wanna encourage this to stay more open, is you can kind of force that a little wider um, and that will kind of help force it to stay open more. You don't have to do that. Um, it may also be more material to get caught on something. So again, kind of choose your own adventure there. Um, now, I'm gonna show you the zip tie option. And I'm basically just gonna do the same thing here. Um, I gotta get my, my holes lined up. And this one I do need to make sure I hold the angle of uh, my biothane correctly because I'm doing two holes and usually these like skinnier holes it's a little easier to go through this material all right so I'm gonna hold that where that was and then again I want to make sure it lines up so I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole all the way through this so I can make sure that I'm lining up um, lining up the holes correctly. If you do use nylon, um, that's not like a biothane, you will probably, once you punch your holes through it, you will probably want to use a match or a lighter to kind of sear those holes so they don't fray around um because that is definitely something that can happen um all right so i can't quite see through there um use my knife again to clean this hole out a little bit so i can see through it and make sure everything is lined up the bio thing is super um strong uh, even when you put holes in it so that's part of why I'm using this but again leather is another great option um, and that will make it a little breakaway if that's something you're interested in all right so, I'm going to use one of these to poke through here to make sure my hole is lined up um, Here we go. Um, all right. Hold that over there. Now I'm gonna punch my other hole. I'm holding that in place. Good. You can just stick your zip tie through your first hole to hold it still. I just don't have my zip tie right here. Um, so, all right, now I can see where that other mark is. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch my hole. Alrighty, looks like I almost got it. Okay, so I've got two little holes here and two holes here and i've got to go grab my zip tie i will be right back so i've got um a little zip tie if you have a bigger zip tie your holes will obviously probably need to be bigger um but i'm gonna start 
on the outside and I'm just going to thread it through, line it up with this hole, thread it through again. I'm gonna slide my, actually, you know what? I'm gonna start with the housing on the other side, on the lower side. Um, so I'm gonna go through the bottom hole there, bottom hole there, come up through, thread it through the top hole here and the top hole there. Got all kinds of colors happening. Um, and then going through with the bottom and then the top allows the tail of this to kind of point down. Um, sometimes when you trim these, they can be quite sharp. So um, I usually end up like leaving it a little extra space. And then actually what I would probably do is cut it about here and that would allow me to tape the end of this around this little area with some electric tape or Gorilla Tape. Um, just to keep this from being something sharp that might scratch another horse or someone's eye. So basically it's just going through, you can see on the inside, just like that. Um, and so that's a really easy option that doesn't take a bunch of like extra tools or supplies. Um, and then for my last option, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And this will cut with regular scissors. You don't have to have these giant um, tin snips that I have. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my hole punch again. And if you have access to a pop riveter, um, <laughs> it's really handy. Uh, it will be pretty permanent though. So that's, you know, something to just keep in mind. Um, but basically, um, and I'm going to need a washer for this, but, um, let's see, I'm going to stick the rivet through, oops, the hole's not quite good enough, I'm going to need the second largest for this one. Um, So if you're using this type of rivet, you want to go from the inside out. And so you'll just slide this part of your rivet through. It doesn't want to go through. Um, there's a little, little elbow grease here. There we go. Pop it right through. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. Pop that through. Also doesn't want to go through. Probably need a little bit bigger hole here. There we go. Should do it. And on a lot of these, you will need a washer. And then on the outside, um, with this type of rivet, it is important to know that sometimes it will leave like a, a sharp-ish area. And you can usually kind of pound that out with a hammer to just kind of flatten it. Um, the inside should be nice and smooth though, which is really nice. Um, and like I said, this will be pretty permanent. So just keep that in mind. Um, I've got to grab my washer and I'll be right back. Okay, here is my washer. And depending on your tool, mine works by just inserting the pop rivet here. I just have to fold the washer down and then you just keep squeezing until it breaks off. Leverage here. There we go. One more squeeze. There we go. All right, so it looks like that on the outside, and that's like a little scratchy, but I can hammer that out and make it really smooth. On the inside, it's really smooth, just like that, and that's going to be a really good hold. Um, and yeah, just taking a little hammer to that, or even like a file that files metal. 
um, we'll file that down really nicely. Yeah, there we go. This is my enlarged muzzle. Again, you can do it to the front. Um, you could expand the sides even a little bit and this gives you a lot of different options if your horse is just a little too big um, for our current muzzle. And then I do, again, I recommend taking corner straps up from here up to the halter and honestly from here too, because we're just creating a lot more space. So there's a lot more room for noses and chins to go where they probably shouldn't. So hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or if you feel stuck and I will try to help you sort through other options.